Hey guys, I'm gonna tell you some areas that are going to boom in 2022. Now I did some research into these areas and I had a look at certain statistics. Now what most people do is they jump on realestate.com, they have a look at some properties and they think some look good and all of that stuff. They ring the agent, blah, 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 you know this general story. Now what you need to do is, yes, jump on realestate.com to look what the general market is paying, but you need to look at some key statistics to be able to work out which market is actually in growth, in boom, and which market is actually coming off the boil. Now some markets that are in boom are Brisbane, if you're not already living in Queensland or you're not living in Brisbane, Brisbane is still booming. It's going to boom for another 12 months-ish. So post-election, just expect that it's going to keep going up. So if you're looking to buy in Brisbane, just keep in mind it is booming. But just remember, if you're only buying one property and you overpay for that property, just because the rest of the market booms doesn't mean your one property is going to increase in value. You always still want to be buying under market value no matter what the area. And to buy under market value, it means you need to know the area and know the values inside and out. Now, when you're in growth phase, when the market's booming, you can buy property, you know, settle it in one or two months or longer, and you can get some growth through that time. If you've overpaid for that property, you may not get any growth at all. And then, you know, in 12 months time, if you've got 20% growth, um, that property that you've bought, if you've overpaid, and I've seen plenty of people overpay by 10 or 20% for properties. And when the market booms, might boom by 20%, but that one property hasn't gone up by 20%. And then it come, when it comes off the boil, you know, it might go backwards by a little bit. So you want to make sure you're actually buying under market value, even in areas that are booming. So Brisbane, yes, it is going to boom. Yes, it is still booming. And you've got pockets of South Australia that are booming. I personally am not invested in South Australia, but I know that it's booming as well. It's got massive undersupply. Rentals are booming. Now, there's other regional areas that are booming as well. I mean, Perth has got a huge undersupply, but in terms of market cycles and market areas, it may not perform as well over the short term. However, long term, uh, it will, or longer term, like in the next couple of years, I believe it actually will perform quite well just off the back of the commodity prices and a lot of money being circulated in Perth. Now, unfortunately, Sydney and Melbourne as a whole, they are going to fall into a bit of a hole or at least flatline further from what they're already doing. So if you are looking at buying a bargain, uh, you know, Sydney and Melbourne might have some really good properties come up in the next 12 months. Uh, but don't expect that Brisbane is going to go backwards. And another area where I've noticed the statistics are looking still really favorable is the ACT. So if you're looking into those areas, they're going to be safe for at least the next 12 months, if not longer. But keep in mind, every suburb, every property is different. Now, there's some other things that you need to consider as well. Just because the stats look really good and the demand far outweighs the supply, all of that stuff, you need to make sure that that's going to continue into the future. If you're a long-term buy and hold investor, if you're planning on buying and holding this property for 10 or 20 years, what's going to happen in the next 10 or 20 years? So you need to have a crystal ball about supply, not only for your immediate area, but also surrounding areas, because surrounding area supply does also contribute to the entire market. You've also got to have a look at key economic drivers. Now, I know for most people, you don't know how to look at this stuff, so I'm going to make it really easy for you. If you drive to an area, and I know if people are buying remotely, you're not going to be able to drive to an area, but try and get somebody on the ground, or you visit there in person, Drive around an area, have a look at what's getting built, how many cranes are in the sky, and when is all this stock coming to market. You can have a bit of a guesstimate as to when things are going to be completed. A normal house will take anywhere from sort of six to seven months to be completed, whereas sort of a medium rise might be 12 to 18 months to be completed, and then a high rise will be sort of two years. So you can see the writing on the wall when projects are going to be completed, and you can always ask you know, the sales agent for a development company when they think the project is going to be finished. In other words, when is that supply coming to market? And also, how much of that supply is being sold to investors or owner occupiers? So if you do a bit of calling around, you can generally get a bit of an idea as to what is coming up in an area, what, what supply is coming to market. So as soon as supply outstrips the demand, well, then you're going to see value softening. And that's one consideration, but then you've also got the consideration of affordability. Now, 
apart from being in oversupply in certain pockets of Sydney and Melbourne, uh, Sydney and Melbourne are also, you know, having this issue with affordability. And it's the same thing that's happening a little bit on the coast in southeast Queensland. Prices have moved so much in the last little bit that you've got now this affordability where people are coming into the market. Yes, they still want the property, but they actually can't afford to pay it. So they're going to make offers that are lower because it's based on their affordability. Now, unless there's a huge amount of buyers in the market, again, back to that supply and demand, but the demand needs needs to be demand from the right buyer, as in a cashed up buyer. So Sydney was in huge undersupply for a number of years post the GFC, and it did not have price increases. It wasn't until 2013 that it boomed off the back of a huge undersupply, and then that demand built up, and then also the regulations of lending uh, eased a little bit, and then people you know, were able to jump into the market. So a lot of people waiting on the sidelines, couldn't afford to, either saving up, and then you know the restraints of the, the lending criteria changed, and then all these people were then able to afford to buy into the market, and then you know, once the, the gates open, it all floods, everyone floods in, and then you know, sheep follow each other. So you need to think about what's going to happen into the future, um, not only with supply and demand, but also affordability. There's so many markets in those areas that I talked about, Brisbane, Adelaide, ACT, uh, Perth, that are in massive undersupply. You've got huge rental crises there. And for the better part, the supply coming online isn't going to be coming online for quite some time. So that's going to remain and it's going to put pressure on rents to keep increasing. So rents are going to increase off the back of lack of supply. So people fighting over rentals like they've already done in certain pockets. Um, But then you've also got uh, what's going to happen with interest rates. So interest rates are going to rise. It's going to put pressure on property investors, which means they're going to be looking for higher yields on their property. So they're going to be pushing the rent up to try and cover their interest rate rises. So it's going to get to a point of affordability. And if we do get to this affordability crisis, then, you know, people aren't going to be able to afford to rent. And that's sort of that line that Sydney and Melbourne have hit in a lot of areas now. And that's why they've come back off the boil because people can't afford it. And there's not that demand or the right demand. So all the people with money have already bought. um, And then there might be people that are sitting on the sidelines waiting to get in. So yes, Sydney and Melbourne, I think there's some bargains to be had in the next couple of years. I don't think there's going to be huge bloodbaths. There might be in some areas, but maybe not in a lot of affluent areas. So my picks is go to Brisbane, be selective with where you are in Sydney and Melbourne. There's still money to be made, but be very, very selective on the suburbs. Perth, they're my crystal balls for at least the next 12 months. Boom time, and they're just the major capital cities that I have selected as going to boom. Now, keep that in mind, push that to one side for a sec and think about property development because I personally have never been too wrapped up in whether a a suburb is going to boom. I've always more been concerned or more being focused on making sure that suburb at least stays flat because in property development, you always work your numbers uh, off the current market trend. So you never assume that the market's going to increase. If it does, it's a bonus. But what you don't want to happen is obviously it to go the other way. You don't want it to reduce in value and then you expect to sell a product into the market and then you actually end up selling it for less than that. So my main focus has been on basically being super conservative with my end values, what I think I can sell the project for and having sort of that minimum level and being able to at least hit that level. And in 90% of the cases, I've always underestimated So I always underestimate the end sale and achieve more than that or achieve at least what I expect to. And I've always developed, apart from the last two years, I've always developed in basically flat markets. So if you can make money in a flat market, you can make money in a boom market. But what's happened is plenty of people have made money in booming markets the last little bit. They think it's easy. Yes, I'm going to go buy a property. I'm going to pay too much. And now the market's going to come off the cool and I'm not going to be able to sell for an extra 20%. So now I'm going to lose money. So there's going to be some real bargains to be had in those areas. But sorry, guys, if you think there's bargains in, you know, Brisbane, Adelaide, Perth, just straight off the shelf, there isn't. You're going to have to work a little bit harder. So start looking at properties off market. 
Uh, this year alone, I've bought a couple of properties in Brisbane off market. They're key sites that I personally have selected. One of them in particular, I bought a couple million dollars under market value. It was only a two and a bit million dollar property. Another one was three to 400,000 under market and that was only a million or $1.2 million property. There's another one that I'm close to that again will be about another million under market value. So yes, you can still buy under market in booming areas. You've just got to be a bit more astute than the average punter. I teach guys or teach you students how to do this as part of my program. All of my learnings, all of my teachings are, are in that program on how I buy properties off market and how I see the value where owners don't know the true value of a property. And it comes back to being able to understand the principles of valuation. Now, I won't go into that in any more detail. I just wanted to sort of just touch the iceberg um, and give you the tip of the iceberg around that. Every single property I've bought um, over the past 11 years, I've always bought it under market value and I've always retained equity at the start in f basically flat markets with the exception of the last um, couple of years. Every market I've developed in um, has basically been in a flat market. So I've had to be extremely astute in the buying. So you guys need to be thinking about that now. Be astute in the buying. Even if you're buying into a boom area, make sure you build in equity and have a look at those booming areas. Get familiar with them first before you go and make a hasty decision to buy. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, please subscribe. Ask me any more questions. I'm going to do some specifics on particular pockets to develop in and to invest in. And I'm also going to give away even more of those um, over this channel as well. Thanks guys, have a great day.